everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is a continuation of my how-to guide in applying minimalism in your life. Taking the meaning of minimalism to a deeper level, a more meaningful level. So today we're talking about minimalism and travel. Now before I launch into this video, I've got two things to quickly check with you. Number one, have you subscribed to my channel? If not, do so right now, immediately. And secondly, have you switched on that notification bell? Make sure it's switched on because that means the moment I've uploaded a fresh new video made with love, especially for you, you know all about it. All right, let's talk about travel and minimalism. So for the last couple of years, I have found myself traveling a lot more, whether it be for work or for pleasure. And it's kind of funny because it's really timed in with minimalism um, and having a minimalistic life. I've had more money to invest in travel and adventure. Making sure I travel and get the most out of travel has really taken on a new level of minimalism in my life. When it comes to going on holidays or traveling, we need to stop and ask ourselves, what is the purpose behind this? Is it to relax and recharge our batteries and restore our sense of well-being? Or is it to explore, to travel, to learn new things? We need to stop and take the time and set the intention and purpose of our travel so that we get the maximum out of our time. So my first step when it comes to incorporating minimalism and travel, and that is to work out your purpose. What are the key things that you want to achieve and do and experience from getting away on your next adventure? By stopping and taking the time, you give yourself a sense of direction and clarity. And you're more likely to open yourself up to all the amazing things that come from getting out of your hometown or state or country and seeing the amazing new things that exist around us in the world. Step number two is to plan mindfully. Now that you know the purpose behind the trip or the adventure that you're about to go on, stop and take the time to do your research. Make sure you avoid just going along with the flow of what society says you should do. You don't necessarily have to go and see the Mona Lisa. You don't necessarily have to go and see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Do what is right for you and your value system so that you get the most out of your trip. The third thing to do is to pack lightly. Easier said than done, but it takes practice. And each time you do it, you do it better. So my recommendation is to put everything that you want to pack neatly laid out on your bed so you can see exactly what you're planning to take and it gives you that opportunity to stop, reflect and maybe even take a few things away that you don't need. Now when you plan and prepare, you do it properly. You pick clothes that are versatile, clothes that you can wear at night time and can also be changed into an evening outfit by simply changing a pair of shoes or switching over from a day handbag to an evening clutch. Pack your suitcase mindfully. Also on that note of fashion, pack versatile neutrals, black and whites that go together, pinks and blues that go together. Avoid large colored patterns if they do not reflect your style and taste. When we pack lightly, we are so much more dynamic. It's so much easier to run to catch your flight. Catching public transport is so much easier. And also, you're not exhausted and weighed down carrying around, lugging around heavy suitcases. And when you get to your destination and when you get home, it is so much easier and quicker to unpack your stuff. So pack lightly. And other little things like check the weather. Is it gonna be raining? Should you pack your raincoat? Or is it gonna be really hot and you just need to be packing really light, breathable clothes? Invest your time in planning and preparing for your holiday. Now on that note of packing lightly, when you pack lightly, you're also helping the environment. With a plane that's a little bit lighter, it uses less fuel, which means we're doing less damage to the environment. And on that note of the environment, if possible, when possible, pay for those carbon offsets. It's only a dollar or two. But that money is really important because it goes towards future environmental projects such as planting trees. We all have the responsibility and the love and care of the place that we live in. We need to take care of our world. So invest in those carbon credits. It's really important. Also use this as a bit of time to breathe. I know myself when it comes to going on holidays, I barely wear any makeup. I just take the absolute essentials. I take my capsule makeup collection and that is it. I don't need to take lots of different blushes and lots of different mascaras. I keep it really simple and sometimes I don't wear any makeup at all. Now another little thing that I like to do which isn't necessarily minimalist but it's more about zero waste and that is to always pack a water bottle. Not only will this help you save you money because you're not buying bottles of water in cafes as you walk around seeing various tourist destinations, you've always got a bottle on the go but it reduces your impact on the environment because you're not buying plastic bottles anymore. Next tip is to take your own toiletries. Again, not necessarily minimalistic, but about the environment. When you take your own toiletries, you reduce the landfill. 
So many times we go to a hotel, we use only a quarter of the soap or a quarter of the shampoo and conditioner and then we leave the hotel and leave them there. That bottle, even though it's barely been used, gets thrown away into landfill. That block of soap that was used once or twice again gets wasted. Do one or two things. Pack your own toiletries, your own shampoos and conditioners and body wash or simply take those toiletries home with you and use them up. The next thing is your hotel. Think about the small guys. As much as I love my large hotel chains, especially when you stay with them on a loyalty basis, you get upgrades, you get free breakfast, you get late checkouts, but it's also really important to think about the little guys. Consider Airbnb, consider couch surfing, support the small guys, and if you're staying in a large hotel, get out of the hotel. When it comes to eating breakfast or lunch or dinner, you know what? Go and explore the local cafes and restaurants around you. Be an adventurer. And when you do this, you get to see what it's like to live in that country. You step out of the comfort zone of being a tourist and start to see what it's like for the community in that city, in that town, in that culture, in that country. It is much more enriching into your life. And you know what, this actually goes beyond food. You could go to the local markets, you could go to the flea markets, you could go to the farmer's markets. You never know what you might discover. My next tip when it comes to minimalism and travel, and that is to simply slow down. The whole point of going on holiday and getting away is to have a break away from it all. Make sure you stay up late doing fun things. Make sure you sleep in. Catch up on that book you've been dying to read and make sure you watch a movie on the plane. Make the most of this time to fill your own bucket. That's Rocco's favorite saying. And then finally, when it comes to gifts, Let's be honest, we don't need to buy ourselves any more souvenirs or gifts for other people. The people who love us want us to come home safely and with some fantastic stories. So instead of feeling the pressure to buy lots of things because you feel guilty because you've been away, why don't you just bring home some fantastic stories, memories and photos and sit down and spend the time to show them and share your experience with them. If you really want, you can just buy them maybe one small present, but make sure it's a meaningful present, something that you know that they will love, value, use, and appreciate. Don't feel the pressure to buy souvenirs and just simple stuff in your life that's going to clutter your home. Now my final note for travel and minimalism, and that is when you unpack your stuff, don't just quickly unpack it and get your suitcase away. Stop and take the time to actually learn and grow. What things did you pack that you didn't end up actually touching at all? Make sure you're mindful in doing this because next time when it comes to going on our next holiday, you'll remember that you packed too many swimmers or you'll remember that you packed too many pairs of sneakers that you simply didn't need. Stop and take the time to learn because each time you do this, you get better and better at packing lighter. And there is something so rewarding and satisfying as you walk through an airport or a bus stop or a train station and you're light and you're able to move freely, move quickly and live more in the moment. Now, I really hope you've enjoyed this video around travel and minimalism. I have so many more videos as part of this very special playlist. So make sure you click check out these videos over here, over here, so you can learn more about how to take your love and passion, which I'm sure is growing every day like mine is, around minimalism and allow it to penetrate deeper into your life. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do and make sure that bell is switched on so you are notified as to when I produce new content made for you with love. All right, everyone, ciao for now and I'll see you next week.